Hi, in this series of videos, I'm going to go deeper into some common types of musculoskeletal pain. And today's video is going to focus on hip pain. Now, hip pain is one of the top three kinds of musculoskeletal pain after spinal pain and knee pain. It affects a significant proportion of the UK population and certainly the data from the versus arthritis state of MSK health that got released in 2021-22 actually talks about this particular data percentage 10.5 to 11 percent of the UK population greater than 45 years of age have got hip osteoarthritis. That's about 2.7 million patients who have got hip osteoarthritis. Now it is a significant problem in terms of numbers but not all hip pain is only about arthritis. Again, we must remember that the hip joint is a very complicated, it allows for a fantastic range of movements for us to, to be able to walk upright, to be able to transfer the load of our whole body through to our legs, through our hips. So it has a lot of roles to play and it often the hip joint actually works with another joint which is located nearby called the sacroiliac joint. And it's usually this combination of joints along with all the muscles that are attached around them and the ligaments that are attached around them that are all going to play a part in supporting your weight and helping you walk and in doing all the activities that we do. So when you get an attack of hip pain, it's important to look at what might be the causes and the mechanisms. Often in younger people, there is the consideration that the mechanism is often due to muscle or ligament or soft tissue changes or strain or pulling. And that can cause a muscle spasm or a tear, or sometimes you have a bursa, which is the lining between the hip joint and the tendons that might get inflamed. So these are often the common reasons for hip pain. But when it comes to hip arthritis itself, there are a number of things that you can do before you consider any form of irreversible treatment like a surgery. There is often the possibility of looking at simple medications, which are all very widely used and considered to be effective using some muscle relaxant medication or simple analgesics like paracetamol or anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen can be enough to arrange and make a difference. I think when I have told you that the soft tissues, the ligaments and muscles can be so involved, then physiotherapy or any form of uh, treatments like osteopathic or even chiropractic and massage like techniques, Pilates, yoga, Tai Chi, all of these techniques which bring about a stretch and relaxation and pull of the hip muscles, the lower back muscles are very useful in resolving most episodes of hip pain. But beyond that point, once you have certain red flags as they say where you have some loss of weight or night pain or pain that prevents you from sleeping or posture then that might be the time for appropriate investigations and further imaging that might give you some targets but it doesn't take away the other self-care attributes you can do and this is about understanding what else could be influencing and could be referring or radiating to hip pain. So episodes of sometimes constipation or urinary tract problems or sometimes painful periods can also refer to your lower back or hip and that must always be thought about and ruled out or managed in a different way. Understanding your pain in this way can give you other opportunities to manage it rather than thinking that everything is about a surgery. Once you've looked at that, look at your diet. Often factors that contribute to constipation or IBS can be referring sometimes to the lower back or the hip. And therefore, looking at an anti-inflammatory diet, reducing your weight, making lifestyle changes, sleep optimization, 
physical activity that brings about good blood flow to the lower back and the hip muscles are all going to be extremely useful in managing the hip pain. But ultimately, if you have had investigations that do confirm that there is osteoarthritis, then that's the time to probably discuss with your surgeon or a specialist around options such as a washout or maybe even a hip replacement. But at that time, it's important to have what I call as the brand discussion. Think about the benefits, talk about the risks about it with your surgeon, ask your surgeon about the alternatives to any form of surgery and ultimately the question what if you decided to do nothing and all these four elements are part of that shared decision making you want to do before you go down for a hip surgery because ultimately a hip replacement is one of the most successful surgeries that can happen but it is the timing it is the context and whether it's the most appropriate thing for you that's important. I hope you found this video useful and informative. For anything else, please feel free to drop your comments and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found the content useful and of value to you. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button for more videos to be notified.